the management of global problems today doesn't hinge on creating new organizations with headquarters in New York or London or Paris. It hinges on on distributing resources as widely as possible to the places where those are necessary. So let's take the example of, uh, of peacekeeping. Now, peacekeeping is one of the most important uh, aspects of the United Nations work. There's over 100,000 peacekeepers actively deployed around the world. Uh, you know, some people question and second guess uh, the validity of those missions, but they're acting under the mandates that states have given to them. And, and, and very often, if they fail, it's because the mandate is, is poorly defined or, or circumscribed. So I hold nothing against them. What I would say, though, is that if we want to live in a stable world, it shouldn't be a world in which uh, the resolution or intervention in certain conflicts in local places in Africa or Asia hinges on the agreement of the Security Council, which we know is a very anachronistic body that many hold to be very illegitimate and unrepresentative. It hasn't been expanded in 30 years with no genuine prospect in sight but rather on strengthening regional security organizations, something that is foreseen and called for in the UN Charter, but has never been, been diligently pursued until now. And now what I see happening in Africa is I see the African Union uh, coalescing uh, more and more. They have several uh, peacekeeping operations, interventions that they have launched, ECOWAS in West Africa, ASEAN is talking about a peacekeeping force. All of these to me are really good examples of how rather than talking about strengthening the center, better global, global governance uh, will, will ultimately come from strengthening uh, the periphery, from allowing people to solve their own problems, from very simply helping others helping help themselves, teaching someone to fish. Uh, you know, there are many, many cliches uh, to capture this moment, to capture this spirit, which we haven't really applied to our diplomacy because the bureaucratic instinct is always, how can we bring this to us? How can we create a global environment organization? I don't know what it would do, but let's just create one anyway. Uh, you know, we have to have a new bureaucratic mindset, a new procedural mindset, a new process mindset that focuses not on centralizing power and authority, but on decentralizing it to those who need it. And what we find is that some of the greatest, you know, sort of, you know, revolutions in how we tackle certain issues, I mentioned, you know, uh, private innovation on, on, on energy conservation, clean technology, but also just take, uh, you know, microcredit as an example of a, of a, of a poverty alleviation uh, instrument. That didn't begin either with uh, any kind of central study, right? It was an experiment, an experiment that began in a number of countries, uh, not least Bangladesh, and has spread around the world. It didn't require that there be a central organization, but lessons are learned sideways. Uh, some of the innovations come from the bottom up, not, not from the top down. And this is a very good example of that. I have a lot of confidence in that. I have a lot of faith in that. I believe that these kinds of things, from issue to issue, whether it is human rights, whether it is climate change, wh whether, whether it is poverty alleviation, we will find that some of the best practices, the best lessons, really occur at the bottom and spread sideways. And that we should harness that and decentralize uh, resources uh, to those in, in need. And that that will lead to uh, a better global governance model.